all our uh, speakers who are here for joining us on this chat. We have a very limited time, but we'll try to cover the entire aspect of Brand Bharat that we were discussing outside when we were chatting. That how the conversation is not about, of course it is about India per se, but Bharat is coming out as the main piece in this conversation and all of you guys have made a contribution there in terms of servicing brands, catering to their marketing needs, bringing them out of their comfort zones and taking their story out to their clients. So I would start with the first question, if you could help us understand how are regional brands uh, incorporating you know, these services that you have to offer in their marketing strategies and how are they leveraging especially nuances like language, culture in their marketing? If you can just start with some examples also. We know uh, if we can start with you. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, so we are a marketing agency based in Chennai and we also have our offices in Bangalore and Hyderabad. So doing that, we kind of understand the different, uh, you know, kind of culture, kind of uh, language, different kind of people. Like say India is such a large country that every 100 kilometers you travel, you find completely different customer persona. So what you sit thinking here, 100 kilometers away from here, the person is not the same or, you know, there is a certain level of customization that needs to happen. So today, even the smaller brands that we work with, right, understand this fact and when we are able to do a lot of, uh, you know, content for them, which is very regional, very customer specific, very personalized, they see a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of ROI on their projects or a lot of return on ad spends that they're able to get. And even if you talk about, say, UGC content that's doing really well for us and I'm sure for other brands as well, even those UGC content that we create, it's like it, they need to relate with that person, right? So it depends on like how customized you can get and how regional you can get and how you can make that person somebody like their next door person. So that's really working for us for the brands that we are working with as well. Perfect. Uh, talking of what's working for brands, Karan, if you can help us, you know, understand some campaigns where you have pulled your client out of their comfort zone and, you know, they have done something that they have not done in the past, if you can help us understand with some examples. Yeah. So thanks, Tasmay. So basically, we are working with a lot of um, national brands that are into legacy businesses. So, uh, um, you know, these brands have had a set method of working. They have had... Uh, their marketing budgets allotted for the entire year. So trying to move them out of their comfort zone was a challenge initially. But a lot of that Digital India movement has helped. So, uh, you know, we are working with Kalika Steel right now. They are a Jalna based brand nationally uh, and ex also exporting a lot of steel. Now, this is a brand that is coming up from the last 30 years that has not worked out of their, their traditional mediums, right? So recently, as a, as a test campaign, we launched an influencer marketing campaign for them. Now you, wow. you look at how outrageous that is, a steel brand doing an influencer marketing campaign. And uh, you know that was something that gave, gave them uh, an idea of what could be. We launched a campaign for Independence Day. It was called Bharosa Hai, an anthem was launched. We uh, approached a lot of influencers to use that anthem to show what India means to them. Right. The only keyword was that they had to showcase what development has happened in uh, in India or or what uh, you know what infrastructural growth or boom has happened. So that in a way is showing what Kalika is doing. You know, steel is like I, I uh, talked to the brand also a brand owner also. It's like Intel. You see a house, you see colors, you see cement, you yes. see everything. But steel is inside. Intel is like. So Intel Inside is a great brand story that we use for Kalika as well. That is what we wanted to use. So this is something that has started off. We see the next generation coming in for a lot of brands that have adopted the digital first approach and it is working out good for them. I feel there is a long way to go. There is a long uh, curve that needs to happen in terms of how this adoption is taken up. But uh, yeah, that is something that is uh, helping our cause as well because we are digital first agencies. This is something that we feel might be the next, you know, uh, the, the, the boom that comes in. Perfect. We'll come to the digital first uh, question again. But before that, uh, Mrinal, you know, we, he just shared an example of a steel brand getting influencers on board, right? So are there any uh, such interesting examples in your kitty that you want to share about regional brands? 
Hi, so I'm Rinal. There are two things I'd like to talk about over here. The first one, when we look at the regional landscape, right? So there are two kinds of brands. Like the example of a brand I'd like to give is Greenply. We've been working with them very, very closely. What we understand is that uh, the entire landscape in India and their requirements that are largely there, right? Like there are stakeholders that are important for the business. So their regional bent of mind of how to create content for the contractor community, be it the AID community, the architects, etc. There's a very clear demarcation of how to run regional content, how to create it, and the planning is done very sectorially, and it's done very regionally for each uh, part of the country. Then another such example is an edible oil brand that we largely work with by the name of Doctor's Choice. They're primarily based out of Eastern India itself, but their adoption and their content planning approach is so unique for Assam, Bengal, Bihar, Jharkhand, etc., which is a very important aspect to keep in mind that now content planning has moved very, very locally, while media was something that we used to plan earlier that how do we run campaigns in each part slash each sector. The primary change that we are largely seeing is that brands are open to doing a lot of on-ground based activations which they amplify digitally. So that's one key trend that we are actually seeing that brands are adopting and obviously influencers play a very key role. Like a lot of these brands have national faces but the need where they feel that they also need regional faces to come and actually address their concerns, speak in the regional language, talk about cultural nuances, that's an important trend that I think we should keep in mind. Uh, Shreyans, the same question to you, cultural nuances, you know, we're using this word constantly. How relevant is that in the kind of work that you have done with your clients at your agency? Uh, thank you, Tasmay. Uh, thank you, Ida, for ha having me. Um, I'd like to give you an example. Um, there's this brand that we work with, uh, Sham Sila, I'm sure most of you have heard of it. They, they've come up with a new venture called Gharika, which is an end-to-end construction solution um, and what they do is that they'll construct houses on uh, pre-existing land. So we were running a campaign for them and for three months uh, we were not giving them enough leads, okay, but the brand trusted us. They said you keep going. So we tried changing the language of communication, okay. So we thought that, you know, if, in, if you keep promoting it in English, it'll reach out to the right target audience. And uh, we were trying to reach out to audience within Calcutta. So my agency is out of Calcutta. And uh, surprisingly, after three months when we switched to Bengali, the performing audience was outside Calcutta. Wow. And the conversion rate, the cost per lead, the cost per lead definitely went down. Where we were getting cost per leads uh, at around 750, 700, 650, it went down to almost 80, 90 rupees, which was surprising for us. And uh, it's, it's, and there is something that I also want to share that the way, and the calendar of, the way calendar of India works is very different from the calendar of West Bengal, okay? Absolutely. It's, it's so different. Uh, the entire country is promoting during Independence Day and Rakhi, almost together, but Bengal does not promote during that time. You know why? Because there's, Bhadramas, okay, that is a, that is the duration where it's unauspicious to buy uh, goods or to uh, invest in properties. So that's when we don't. Even now, when everyone's moving towards the festive season, brands are shying away, like I'm not talking about retail brands, uh, sector mostly real estate is shying away from investing because it's the Pitrapakshu season that is there and they do, again, it's unauspicious. Right after 2nd of October, they start investing again. So that's how different uh, the region of West Bengal is. Uh, and marketing for Calcutta is different from marketing for West Bengal and it is different from marketing for North Bengal. So that's how diverse uh, regional marketing is from national marketing. Right, and that is where I think the customization piece also comes in, right? And uh, I would come back to you, uh, Vinod, with that. We were just talking that you have a national client on board and you also have several smaller clients on board. So help us understand the exposure here and how is it different servicing a national brand and servicing a regional brand? What are the differences when, in the briefs that they give you, in the services that you offer, what is the difference? 
See, when a brief comes from a national brand, definitely it's a lot more thought out. Uh, it's very clear and it's very crystal clear on what they require. Uh, it's just challenging in terms of how you can deliver, how the execution can be better. You're almost laid out what to be done and you're kind of executing at the best of your capabilities, right? Whereas when it comes to regional brand, there's a lot more education that is involved that we need to tell them in terms of what's happening around. They're all mostly, I'm not saying all, there are a lot of startups which are really advanced. You know, the founders of startups who we work with are like, they know more than a lot of people in marketing itself. So they are very advanced. But if you see larger companies, especially in Chennai, they all come with a very traditional background, like somebody was saying earlier, right? So in terms of educating them as to what digital can do for them or what is that they can do extra. So we work with, say, a brand called uh, Zimsense, which is one of the largest watch brand in, in South India. Uh, they have multi-store outlets, etc., and all the malls, etc. So even them, if you see today, we've been working with them for a while, but still their traditional spends are a lot more than their digital spends. Uh, they, are, they don't shy away from spending on uh, mass campaigns, but they don't want to go, and you know, it's very difficult for us to convince them to go for a customized uh, campaign. So the challenge of educating them is definitely more, but the, uh, experimenting becomes easier with them because they are more willing to learn also. More. Some of them are like really willing to learn when we give them clear examples or clear case studies of how it has helped other brands or use cases of even not our clients, even if we go give them some use cases of how, say, for example, his use case could be a great use case for me to use for uh, steel companies, right? So use cases like that saying how this is adapted for other brands and how the other brands has leveraged digital today or how a steel brand has leveraged influences. So why don't you try it? You know, that, that, that's something that we look forward to. So that's probably the biggest difference we have. Talking of differences, Karan, if you want to elaborate uh, on this, you know, servicing a national brand, you work with a couple of uh, government-backed bodies as well, you work with brands as well. What's the difference? See, the difference comes in from the audience that they're catering to. Right. So you you see right now Amazon, you all, I, 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 I have to believe that everybody has Amazon on their phones right now, but Amazon as a national brand has also taken the approach of how they can reasonably adopt to these. So they have an app that can you know, change its language to regional languages as well, so to better cater to the audiences that they have. So when it comes to talking or, or catering these national and regional brands, I'll give you an example right now. Uh, we are working with Kinetic Green as a brand. Uh, the two-wheeler, three-wheeler division is entirely managed by us. The audience is not our metro audience. So the audience for Kinetic Green is tier two, tier three audience. So now we have to cater strategies that are appealing to all of this uh, Bharat audience, right? So this is an audience that is waking up, they are, they are uh, value conscious. I, I would not say uh, Indians are looking out for cheap products, it is Indians are looking out for value. So if you are able to convey that right value in terms of a communication, that is bang on then, you, you uh, get the right audience to your product. Now we recently, uh, Fiki approached us recently for, Fiki is the body that regulates the entire uh, EV uh, industry for launching a campaign. So all of us must or, or uh, will remember the uh, NECC campaign that was launched years ago of Sunday Hoya Monday, Roj Kha one day. You, you remember mutual fund coming up with mutual fund Sahiye campaign. That was a industry related campaign, right? So government has now, uh, told Fiki that you have to come up with a campaign that drives this change of people adopting EVs. Still this day and age you see with this information overload, people still have a lot of uh, misconception regarding EVs. So that is when we are coming in. We are coming up with a regional campaign now. That is the key word here. You cannot cater to an audience that is already information overloaded. You have to cater to an audience do, who do not know what, what an EV adoption into the lifestyle will uh, make a change. There is an interesting concept of uh, which Kunal Shah obviously endorses. It's called the Delta 4 theory. So Delta 4 basically means that if, if there is a change coming into the market and that change is so strong in terms of, let's say an example would be an Ola and Uber. So that, that brand coming in, that forces you to not go back into uh, sitting on the road and calling a taxi. Right? You, you have everything on your hands. So that is the Delta 4 change. EV is that kind of a change. If you go into an EV, you'll never go back to an ICE vehicle. Regional markets have to be very, like uh, uh, Sreyansh here mentioned, language specific. You have to cater to the language that they speak. Emotion specific, uh, uh, scenarios that are depicted. Again, an example would be, you know, any ad that Piyush Pandya writes, you see that India reflecting into his ad. You see uh, 
uh, scenarios, stories of India reflecting. That's why it is very relatable, right? So uh, I would say that when it comes to regional brands, they have to get understand what audience they're catering to and cater to that in that language itself. Uh, Mrinal, I'll tweak the question a little bit for you. He mentioned a very important point on value for cost, right? So help us understand uh, how important is value for cost for your clients uh, when they are regional clients? And are they also comfortable going big, spending on digital marketing, etc.? Or is it very difficult to convince them that, okay, you can do this, this will get you returns? How, how is the story different when you are pitching to or talking to a national brand compared to when you're talking to a smaller brand? So my take over here is that all clients, right? Like, I mean, be it national or regional at the same point of time, all clients have their quirks and they are all equally demanding. So it's not that a national client is easier or a regional client is easier. It's just that national clients come with their set of protocols and processes that you have to work with. It's a lot more about presentation, KPI presentations, discussions. Whereas for regional first brands, it's a lot more about handholding, working as their extended marketing team. There is a lot more trust and dependability that comes into the equation, right? So with that expectation of trust, obviously you also need to know how and what services to pitch. So it's not always about upselling, cross-selling. Uh, my fellow panelists also mentioned the role of UGC, right? Like I feel like UGC content creation, regionalization of content, etc., is something that's really on the rise. So the part about regional brands not wanting to spend, I think that's actually a myth. It's just about winning their trust, uh, making them pass through the levers, obviously getting them through campaigns, getting them things like I uh, spoke about an edible oil brand uh, a little before, right? So this brand, we recently did like an AI first campaign for them with a local celebrity and created content that was sent out to their entire trade. We did it for consumers. We did like our campaign inspiration was from Cadbury itself, right? Like where they had done something for Raksha Bandhan, we're doing the same thing for Durga Puja right now as well. So I think it's largely a mindset. It's nothing that a regional brand can't spend. They are more resistant to change. They want to do it, it's just about convincing them, giving them the right solutions, showcasing value, and then it obviously becomes like equally beneficial and that entire like channel and dialogue is open. Yeah. Great, those were very interesting points. Any other myths that you would like to uh, bust, Shreyans, about uh, smaller clients, regional clients? I think uh, mostly it's been covered by everyone. It's about uh, the budget, of course, because there's, uh, the kind of budgets that you get for regional marketing will always be lower because you have to, the market size is way bigger for a national brand. Uh, with regional brands, it's, uh, it does not, it's not one size fit all, okay? It has to be customized. So one strategy might work for one, may not work for the other. So it has to be customized for each client for uh, the region. Uh, at the same time, like uh, Mrinal said, that they, you need to convince the client that they can take it, you know, they can go all, all in. Um, there is another very interesting mix that I want to talk about is about mixing traditional with digital, okay? Everyone's saying that traditional is dead and, uh, you know, let's focus on uh, uh, targeted marketing, demographic marketing. Um, I feel that traditional marketing supports digital and vice versa. Uh, they, they need to exist together. Okay, and both of them support each other. And uh, there, is, there, is, there is this sense of uh, trust that you need to bring to these clients that they need to invest in both uh, sides of marketing and not just invest in digital because they're getting you know, leads or they're getting sales just through this. They need to be mixed together to get the optimum result for their brand. And you know, in fact, this was the next question I had in mind, so we'll start with you this time. Uh, you, you spoke about having a lot of real estate clients on board, right? And we are used to see a lot of real estate clients on hoardings, on OH specifically, on newspapers, on blanket ads, etc. So how open are they, again coming back to the same point you raised, to getting experimental with the media mix? And what is the right balance that you suggest to these clients who have always been exposed to more traditional, right? To get new uh, media mix options on board. Uh, first of all, it depends on the ticket size of the project. Uh, that's a big factor when 
uh, we suggest whether you should go for a larger chunk of traditional or you should go for a larger chunk of digital, okay? For high ticket size, for H&I clients, okay, you need to invest in traditional media. You need to invest in holdings, you need to invest in print because they need to see you. If they don't see you, and it needs to go, and it needs to run on all media, okay? Digital, PR, uh, holdings, print, they need to see it everywhere so that they can trust you. And trust is a very big factor, at least with the clients that I, I, I work with. And uh, these campaigns are quarterly launched for all the clients, and they have to, I specifically, insist that you need to stick to traditional media, media and invest in it because it raises awareness. Awareness, people forget when, when real estate companies are, are targeting their audience, they forget that they need to make, make people aware of it as well. It's not just leads that they have to deal with, you know, it's not a transactional, uh, you know, contract that we have. It's, it's a, it's an overall, overall contract that we have that you need to create a brand for the project which in turn will convert those leads that you've been able to capture through digital. So both go hand in hand. You know, probably a lead comes in through your digital media but they don't see any holding around. So they will not trust you, okay? That you know, uh, whether this project will end or not. Of course, Rera, Hera, they have come in that, that has increased the trust for sure, but they need to see you more. That's why you need to have the mix, you know, have the mix for tradi with traditional as well as di digital. Mrinal, same question to you on balance, striking the right balance between digital and traditional and how has it worked for your clients? I personally actually come from a larger advertising house. Digital is a part of Look At group, right? So Look At technically handles the entire mainline piece of the business. Digital is the digital division for look at, which is what I head personally. So this particular question, actually, I would like to answer that in more specifics and details because there are a lot of brands that we work with where we handle 360 mandates. What do I mean by the 360 mandates? Starting from their creative to their mainline releases, budget planning, how to do it on digital, how each of these like cross marry into each other, how the entire planning is largely done. So. Personally, I mean, in terms of results for brands that we manage, be it across FMCG, real estate, cement, plywood, etc., traditional plays a very, very tactical role, especially when there is a new consumer promo, there's a new product launch, there's a new celebrity face that you're launching. And like Shreyansh mentioned, seeing it on mainline for India still works because it adds a lot of credibility for your brand that, oh yeah, if they can do this, they're definitely someone that we can go with. Digital helps in the recall and the hammering and the repeat visibility and getting actionable KPIs that you can quantify. So they both play very different roles and I don't think one can do without the other. Right. Uh, Karan, I will ask you the question with a little bit of tweak because you also already mentioned about how you have pushed clients out of their comfort zone of being just on traditional, taking them to digital and you also mentioned uh, influencer marketing. So combining both of them together, influencer marketing is a big part of digital these days. Are there any challenges to get collaborations or you know, get influencers on board in regional markets compared to national markets or other markets? See, the challenge definitely lies in identifying the right kind of influencer that fits the brand. You cannot let, you cannot get an influencer that is much bigger than the brand or will overshadow what the key messaging has to be, right? You have to identify a message or an influencer that, that uh, will convey the right kind of emotions, the people trust and can have a right mix with the brand itself. So that uh, challenge is in identification. You cannot bring in an influencer that is going to charge or, or going to eat up a lot of the budget because one thing is getting an influencer but then you have to promote it as well, right? So that, that uh, has to be kept in mind. Uh, while we are working with such brands in terms of regionals, we see a lot of regional content creators popping up now. And each one has developed a kind of a niche. So now you have to keep yourself updated in terms of what content creators are coming in. We, I am absolutely sure that each one of us sits in the evening, scrolls through our reels just for the entertainment purpose, but we have to have that knack of identifying, let's say we come across 100 reels, we will find that one person that is developing a certain kind of niche. 
let's say somebody who's working into bodybuilding, we have to then cater to what kind of brands we can pitch him to, right? So that right mix needs to be found out. And eventually I feel uh, if you're getting a story out through a, a, a human being present there, a person who people can trust, and then you can develop a storyline from there, that is the right mix that a brand is looking forward for. And if that is uh, achieved, uh, nothing like it, I feel. Uh, we know same question to you. Sure, like uh, just to kind of add to that, like uh, see what happens typically is like a real estate client, like uh, my colleagues were speaking, is like they normally come and ask you when they come to you, what is your cost per lead? So what is the cost per lead you can get for us? So it's not the same for everyone, right? So as you said, like if somebody's doing like heavy branding out there in terms of traditional branding and then when you're running a digital campaign, your cost per lead is definitely much lesser. Your cost per conversion, lead to conversion ratio is much lesser compared to somebody who's never done anything in traditional mediums and they just launch something and just, just want to start. So I think it's very important to have the right mix and uh, also as people pointed out, how do you budget that thing, right? The marketing mix of the or the media planning mix is like, how much do you, depending on the budgets again, if it's a, if it's a very low budget like he said earlier, right? If it's a very low budget, I'll probably go more digital use a mixture of influencers and digital to try and see how it is and if it's a brand which is targeting regional then yeah more of digital more of traditional probably but if it's a national brand which is lesser budgets for a particular campaign then probably digital because nationally doing your traditional advertisement would be a lot more expensive and would bite into it so i think it's important to for brands to understand like depending on the campaign goals that they have depending what the objective they want to make they definitely have to have a mixture of everything actually because today as he was saying right same 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 way like if i'm a lead so say i i, I want to buy a real estate property i go click give my data i'm not going to give it only to you i'm going to give it to another three people or four people right where so i i give it to four people all your four people sales team calls me and i'm thinking where to buy i go out in my car and i see one brand's holdings there i go open my instagram i see the influencer talking how good that is so i'm obviously more you know, convinced to buy that particular brand. So it's important how many times the brand is able to hit you in, they normally call it as a seven hit strategy, right? It's about how the brand is able to hit you in multiple different ways to build that trust on you. So as he said, trust is the most important part when a person is making that buying decision. So that is getting built by a mixture of things, by people seeing everywhere. Even if you, even if you keep retargeting them in digital ads, right? You're gonna see the same thing or similar things again and again, but it's the same, it, it is important, but it's the same medium. But when you kind of give them a different approach, different kind of things, uh, influencer talking about it, a UGC content talking about it, a hoarding here, you know, different kind of things definitely makes a lot of difference. If I may add a point to that, I feel Nisho as a brand has done quite well in terms of tapping into this regional influencers. Uh, in fact, they've done amazingly well in terms of the kind of influencers they've adopted. Uh, you see the kind of content that we consume. Uh, Kishore Biyani mentioned mentions is that India A, India B, India C audience. So India C typically does not consume content the way metro audiences consume content, right? That's why you see a lot of regional players popping in. MX player is huge in regional markets. If you are able to use that for your benefit, for the brands that you're working with, that can get your content across a lot faster, a lot cheaper than the traditional mediums as well. Traditional, I mean Instagram. Facebook is huge in regional uh, parts of the country as I feel it is not being consumed as much in the metro uh, audiences. So uh, if you want to study the right kind of mix, Misho has done quite well. I would say that that is the brand that we need to study, how they've executed it and then probably implemented for the brands that we work on also. Yeah, and just on top of that, I think we recently there was a survey which we attended with one of the events, like the number of consumption content, like it's almost 93% of content in India on YouTube is being consumed on re regional content, right? So it's vernacular content, rather almost 93 percentage. It's a huge amount of content that's being, cons you know, and also when you want to target regional, which we've not adopted earlier, but recently I attended one of the other events from uh, E4M actually, which is when we heard about it, where, where we, we came to know that like, in terms of like, I mean, if you want to target like regional content, right, or tie to tie three cities, it's important for you to leverage on YouTube because that's one of the channels where people don't need to sign in to actually watch any content. Even Facebook, you have to sign up, Instagram, whatever. So I think that was a good point and we actually implemented it and it, it gave us a good kind of results. Perfect. There's one uh, last wrapped question that I'll come to each one of you is he spoke about trust and that is where brand loyalty also comes in. 
So around, what is the perception around brand loyalty in regional markets? And second is what are the innovative tactics or strategies that is working for uh, regional markets? Any upcoming trends that you would want to talk about? We'll start with you. So um, I want to give you an example and I'm sure it is relevant to everyone's location. I'll talk real estate specifically. I'm sure all digital agencies will have at least one real estate client, okay? There are brands, there are real estate brands that you work with, okay? And you can identify the ones that are right on top, okay? If you run ads for those companies, the cost per lead and the cost per conversion for them will be the lowest for the same ticket size, same location of another brand. Because that brand, because the brand whose conversion value is lower, the cost per conversion value is lower, has invested in their brands years before, okay? For years they've invested on their brand, they've built their brand, and they've invested in, in all kinds of advertising avenues. That's why when they come up with new projects, say for example DLF, we've heard news that you know whenever DLF launches a new project gets sold out. Okay, why is that? Because they've been able to create that brand and that market. So you need to sell this story to your client that they need to invest in the brand aspect of things as well. It is not just about project branding, it's also about group branding. It is never, probably a project will finish, but the brand is going to stay. So that is where the brand also needs to invest in. Second, every ticket size of a project has a different way of marketing. If you're, like I said, I, uh, in the previous question that you asked, I mentioned that for a, if you're trying to target an HNI client, it needs to uh, ride on all uh, digital avenues, whether it's digital, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Google, whether it's programmatic, it needs to be everywhere, okay? In English, preferably, okay? Because that is what uh, the, the, the clientele prefers. But if you're going for a low ticket size project, okay, probably it's around 35, 40, it's in the suburbs, you're trying to market, you're trying to, market to uh, that kind of an audience, regional works, regional language works really well. They convert really well. You can try it. Today, if you're running an ad for a project that's worth, say, under 80 lakhs or under 70 lakhs, you run it in a regional language, and I can definitely, not guarantee, but I, am, I have tried it and I've tested it, your cost per lead and your cost per conversion will be lower. And you can try it for yourselves. So this is this is what this is what uh, the marketing has evolved. This this is how marketing has evolved over time right. for regional uh, for regional marketing. Yes. We'll quickly take it to all other other speakers. Rinal, next mile growth is coming from innovations like. So I'll just quickly add to that. So what we've uh, adopted as an approach and something that I think has really worked well for our set of uh, regional brands is. We've invested very heavily in creating IPs for brands, right? Like when you talk about brands, they have very specific days slash activation moments slash topical days where it makes a whole lot of sense for them to be a part as a brand. Rather than trying to reinvent the wheel every year, like say for example, a Ganesh Chaturthi comes, a Durga Puja comes, a Diwali comes, these are all key activation moments, be it a jewelry brand, an FMCG brand, etc. The idea is to be able to connect with your audience and to ensure that I mean, they remember you, right? Like you can't really shout louder than the la national brand because again, the role of budget comes into the picture. So how do you really break that cycle, right? Like you create an IP, you create a jingle, you create something memorable and you rehammer that every year, obviously embellish it, add more to the property and keep bringing that back forward. So that's something that's really worked well. So I wouldn't call that more of a tactic. That's something that we've really deployed and it's worked well. So I'd just like to share that with all of you. Thanks. What is working for uh, your brands, Karan? What is that embellishment that you're getting on board? I, I feel uh, when you mentioned the aspect of the next trend that is coming in, I, f I think brands have to look at consumption patterns. They have to identify what kind of consumption patterns are driving uh, 
or 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 capturing people's attention so i mentioned uh, mx player as a platform that is performing really well there are z4 that is performing really well in regional markets these kinds of platforms are what, what brand should be on the lookout for understand which platform is driving the maximum people's attention and be there be there as a brand be there not to sell a product but to drive awareness for the purpose that you're uh, in this business for and eventually you'll you'll get your return so yeah we know the last yeah i mean i think uh, mixture of everything what everybody said i think personalization is very important trying to go deep into understanding your different audience segmenting them into different sectors and trying to see what works with them because what works in targeting me will not work in targeting him so it's like trying to get as much detailed as possible in terms of data analytics use a lot of data analytics use ai as well to an extent and try to see how to best segment the audience and then target them using a lot of personalization and regional content perfect thank you so much panelists for being a part of this conversation it was a pleasure hosting all of you